Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am so excited for today's video because this has been highly requested and an extremely common condition that I see all the time as an OBGYN. Today we're gonna to talk about gestational hypertension and preeclampsia. Both of those are gonna be fancy medical terms for high blood pressure in pregnancy. Now it's a little bit more than just high blood pressure, so we're gonna dive into it, but I'm super excited because this is kind of the bread and butter of being an OBGYN and working on labor and delivery. We see these all the time and they can be extremely dangerous for both the mother and the fetus. So this is an extremely important topic. We see it a lot. I cannot wait to jump in. Before we get started, I hope you guys will hit that subscribe button and become part of this YouTube family that I've made here on the internet. I make weekly YouTube videos where we talk about all things from pregnancy to GYN to periods to you name it. So as I mentioned earlier, we're gonna be talking about preeclampsia and gestational hypertension. I'll be explaining what these medical conditions are, how we diagnose them, risk factors, potential things you can do to prevent this from happening, or prevent it from happening again if you've already had it in a previous pregnancy. Okay, enough of the intro. You guys know what time it is. Let's jump into the video. I like to start all of my videos with an explanation and definitions. So gestational hypertension and preeclampsia are defined as hypertensive disorders in pregnancy. Hypertension is the fancy medical term for high blood pressure. These two disorders are the leading cause of maternal morbidity and mortality in the world. So when I said earlier that we see this a lot, I was not lying. Preeclampsia complicates about two to 8% of pregnancies around the world in Latin America and the Caribbean. Shout out to Puerto Rico, my home country. It's actually responsible for 26% of maternal deaths. So this is a very serious diagnosis. Definitions. Gestational hypertension is going to be defined as having blood pressure that is 140 over 90, two times that is four hours apart, and you have to be past 20 weeks pregnant. Now I know that kind of sounds like a lot of different things to diagnose gestational hypertension, but hear me out. If before 20 weeks gestation, you have elevated blood pressure, that is just what we call chronic hypertension meaning you probably have high blood pressure outside of pregnancy. This wasn't a cause of the pregnancy. You just have that medical diagnosis prior to getting pregnant. Now, if you start to develop high blood pressure in pregnancy, that's when we see it after 20 weeks. Then we can say, hmm, this person didn't have high blood pressure. And then now all of a sudden they're past 20 weeks and consistently the blood pressure is continuing to be elevated, elevated, elevated. Then we can say the reason for the high blood pressure is within the pregnancy. Now with preeclampsia, you have elevated blood pressure after 20 weeks, but a couple things are different. The blood pressure tends to be higher and you start to see proteinuria or protein in the urine. This is because preeclampsia is a condition that also affects the kidneys. So if your kidneys aren't functioning the way that they should be, you will start to lose protein in your urine. So what's the real difference between gestational hypertension and preeclampsia? Think of gestational hypertension as the precursor to preeclampsia. When we start talking about preeclampsia, you have that high blood pressure, but now it's affecting other organ systems. Like I mentioned, it can affect your kidneys. It can also affect your liver. It can also affect your vessels and the vessels in your brain. So it's kind of like the step up from gestational hypertension or the more severe form of gestational hypertension. That's what's called preeclampsia. So if a woman has gestational hypertension, how likely is she to get preeclampsia? So the process of gestational hypertension turning into preeclampsia can take several weeks. Now, when we start talking about preeclampsia, when do we get really concerned? That's when we see preeclampsia with severe features, meaning the mom's blood work is starting to look concerning. The baby looks concerning. Blood pressures are extremely high. That is what's called severe preeclampsia. And the changes between preeclampsia and severe preeclampsia can happen in moments. So what can you see with severe preeclampsia? You can see thrombocytopenia or a low platelet count, which then can run into problems of bleeding. It can affect your liver function. Your liver's up here on the right side. So some women might have severe right upper quadrant pain. It's going to affect your kidney function. So your kidneys don't work as well. It can lead to pulmonary edema or a collection of fluid in your lungs. 
Like I mentioned, it can affect the vessels. So specifically the vessels of your brain that can ultimately lead to a stroke. If your blood pressure is too high, if your blood pressure is consistently 160 over 110 or higher, and we can't get it to calm down, the woman is at an increased risk of having a seizure and seizures, not a good thing, especially in pregnancy. So you might be asking, Dr. Ali, both of these conditions sound so similar. Why is there even a distinction between the two? And you're right. They both are really similar and they're honestly both treated very similarly. The biggest difference is going to be on when we recommend induction of labor, if it's severe preeclampsia versus gestational hypertension, but both conditions require extra surveillance of the mom and the fetus. All right, now let's talk about how these two conditions can affect the pregnancy. I mentioned some of these just a second ago, but let's review them. So specifically, how does preeclampsia or having high blood pressure affect the mom? So one of the things you'll see is changes to the vasculature or the vessels. These changes are really going to affect the mom's ability to manage her fluid. So a lot of women with preeclampsia have a lot of fluid retention. That is why we see swelling. That is why pulmonary edema or kind of retaining fluid in your lungs is something that we see with preeclampsia. It can also affect your platelets and your platelets are responsible for clotting off your blood. In preeclampsia, we see a decrease in the number of platelets. So then if you run into things like a postpartum hemorrhage or heavy bleeding after delivery, these women can really struggle to stop that bleeding. Like I mentioned before, preeclampsia really affects the kidney function. So if your kidneys aren't working properly, you're going to one, spill out a lot of protein in your urine and two, you're going to have decreased urine. So you make less urine and the urine that you're putting out is really concentrated. Kidneys are extremely important. They do so much for our health. Some would even argue it is the most important organ in the body. So having a decreased kidney function, especially in pregnancy, when your kidneys are already having to work extra hard, it can be really scary. Now let's talk about how these conditions can affect the fetus or the baby. One of the things we can see with preeclampsia is that utero placental blood flow is impaired. That is just a fancy way of saying that the placenta isn't working properly and the baby is not getting enough blood flow. Think about it this way. If the mom is not doing a very good job, of perfusing the placenta, meaning the mom has really high blood pressure, the kidneys are struggling, the liver is struggling, vessels are more leaky, you're retaining a lot more fluid, you're swollen. All of that is going to affect the way that the mom can perfuse or give blood to the placenta because the placenta is what gives blood to the baby. So if the baby is not getting enough blood, that could lead to conditions like IUGR or intrauterine growth restriction, which means that the baby is smaller it's not getting all the nutrients that it needs to grow. This can also lead to things like oligohydramnios or meaning there's low amniotic fluid. Again, this is all correlated to the placental blood flow. Placenta is not giving baby blood, baby's not growing appropriately, so it can't make all of that urine. The urine is the amniotic fluid. And if there's not a lot of amniotic fluid to kind of cushion and protect the baby and the placenta, that can lead to things like a placental abruption where the placenta starts to separate from the uterine wall and that can cause a lot of bleeding and can be a huge emergency. I'm happy to make YouTube videos explaining all of these different conditions because I know it seems like a lot. So if you have more questions about them, let me know in the comments. All of these conditions that can affect the baby can then lead to a preterm labor or a preterm delivery, meaning you have to deliver a very premature baby. Obviously premature babies then can have a lot of complications and fetal death or a stillbirth can also happen from these things. This is why it is extremely important to have extra surveillance of the mom and the babies when a woman gets diagnosed with high blood pressure because the conditions that can affect the mom and the baby are so concerning. So how do we manage preeclampsia and gestational hypertension? Two options, delivery or expectant management. Now this is going to vary person to person because obviously every case is different. If it's someone who's stable, where the blood pressure is controlled, there's no crazy severe preeclampsia symptoms, or maybe you start them on a blood pressure medication and the blood pressure is better controlled. If it's just the diagnosis of gestational hypertension, the recommendations from ACOG or the American College of OBGYNs is to deliver these patients at 37 weeks. Similarly, if it's preeclampsia, not severe preeclampsia, but preeclampsia that is also well controlled, you're doing all of your outpatient management, you're getting weekly ultrasounds, you know that the baby's doing okay, then we can safely say we can deliver these women at 37 weeks. Now, but something like severe preeclampsia, 
baby's not starting to look good, the mom is getting really sick, she has a lot of those symptoms, or you have a concerning tracing on the baby, you want to deliver these patients earlier at around 34 weeks. Now there have been cases where we have had to deliver moms before 34 weeks because they are getting so sick or because their babies are getting so sick. So when you start talking about gestational hypertension or preeclampsia, it's not one size fits all. Honestly, no part of medicine is one size fits all because everyone is going to react differently and have different situations and stuff like that. So you really take these at a case by case, patient by patient basis. You want to make sure you include an MFM or a maternal fetal medicine specialist. They're OBGYNs who then trained in high risk pregnancies, but you want to have them on board to kind of get their recommendations, see if we can extend the pregnancy longer, or if we really just say, Hey, we need to deliver earlier for the health and safety of both the mom and the baby. Now let's talk about the mode of delivery. Do we have to do a C-section in that case? Or can these patients have a vaginal delivery? Again, this will vary case by case, depending on how sick the mom or the baby is. But most times you could just induce the patient in an attempt to have a vaginal delivery, knowing that if an emergency pops up, if the fetal heart rate looks really concerning or, you know, X, Y, Z thing, then you may have to proceed with a C-section. But just because you have gestational hypertension or preeclampsia, it does not mean you have to have a C-section. Okay, let's talk about risk factors for these conditions. One of the risk factors is nulliparity. Nulliparity means that this is your first pregnancy. That's actually a risk factor for preeclampsia. Another one is multiple gestations. So if you have a twin pregnancy or a triplet pregnancy, you're going to be more likely to develop gestational hypertension or preeclampsia. Another big one is a history of preeclampsia. If you had preeclampsia in a previous pregnancy, there's a higher likelihood that you're going to get it in subsequent pregnancies. Is that always the case? No, but like most things in medicine, if it happened in a prior pregnancy, it's likely going to happen again. Another thing that can put you at risk for getting preeclampsia is you already have a baseline history of high blood pressure outside of pregnancy. That puts you at an increased risk of developing preeclampsia and these complications. Another one is having diabetes, whether it's gestational diabetes or diabetes outside of pregnancy, both of those put you at risk. Another one is having an underlying kidney disorder. Like I said, preeclampsia affects the kidneys. So you, if you already have an underlying kidney disorder, chances of you developing preeclampsia are higher. Being advanced maternal age or AMA puts you at an increased risk. If you want to watch my video on a pregnancy at 35 and older, I'm gonna leave it linked down below. Having to use assisted reproductive technologies or doing IVF or IUIs or anything like that actually puts you at an increased risk of developing preeclampsia. All right, now let's talk about how we can potentially prevent preeclampsia or gestational hypertension from happening. There has been so much research over this topic because like I said, this is a condition that we see so much and it's responsible for a lot of mortality and morbidity in pregnancy. So they looked at things like taking supplements like vitamin C, vitamin D, fish oil, a bunch of stuff. That type of research has honestly been inconclusive. But like I've been mentioning, medicine is not one size fits all, so it's always important to sit down and talk to your doctor about maybe a supplement that you can take. There has been some really good research on aspirin's use in pregnancy at preventing preeclampsia. Now this isn't recommended for everybody, so it's very important that you sit down with your doctor and figure out if this is something that's going to be helpful for you. I do want to give a quick recap. Preeclampsia and gestational hypertension are diagnoses that can be worrisome and concerning. The most important part, if you've been diagnosed, is to talk to your doctor and make sure you're optimizing your health and doing everything necessary to make sure that you have the best outcome in your pregnancy. Another thing to keep in mind is that if you were diagnosed and then you delivered, make sure you have close follow-up with your doctor. Is there anything you can do in your life to optimize your health? Maybe that's starting you on blood pressure medication. Maybe it's changing your diet, your exercise, losing weight. Maybe it's you stop smoking. There's a handful of things that you can do to optimize your health so that in your next pregnancy, you don't have to have the diagnosis of high blood pressure. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something new and I hope I was able to clarify a couple of those definitions and that you know more about high blood pressure in pregnancy. I'm gonna leave all of my social media links down below, TikTok, Instagram, my blog. My blog I write in Spanish and in English. If you're not already part of this family, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button and become part of this family. 
I post most of my new videos on Sundays. All right, you all, thank you so much for all the love and support. It means the world to me, it truly does. You guys are my people and I love connecting with you. I hope you guys have an amazing week. Always remember to be kind and show love to everyone around you. I love you guys so much and I'll see you at my next video. Bye.